Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnson. Welcome to Lecture 8 of Vector Calculus, which is all about scalar fields. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at three different ways of visualizing scalar fields and talking about them, and we're going to sort of compare them to each other so that you know sort of how to convert one to another. Okay, let's start off with, though with what is a scalar field and sort of intuitively, it's kind of like the exact opposite of a path. Okay, remember the last several videos we've been talking about paths, which are functions from R to Rn and sort of the important point there is that the input space is one dimensional. So when you plot it, you know, you get a curve in space, you get a curve in Rn. Well, a scalar field instead just asks that the output space is one dimensional. So that's what makes it a scalar field. You've got a function from some domain living in any dimension. So x here is just the domain of the function. And the output is one dimensional, though. The output is just a real number. OK, and that's the important point. OK, so how you can think about these is, you know, you've got m dimensional space. And what you're doing is you're assigning a real number to every point in that m dimensional space. OK, so let's think about how we can visualize this. And you've probably already seen one way of visualizing these sorts of functions in previous courses, and that was via surface plots. OK, so back in multivariable calculus, you would have talked about how if you had a function like this from m dimensional space to one dimensional space, you probably didn't call it a scalar field back then, but it was. OK, if you have a function like this, what you can do is you can say, OK, the output of my function, that's going to be the height of a surface above the input point, above whatever point I'm plugging into the function. OK, so for example, if m is 2, if your function is going from r2 to r, then what you can do is you can say, OK, I've got x input axis and a y input axis, a two dimensional input space. That's the floor. And then the function value is the height above the floor. Okay, if you stitch all these points together, you get the graph of the function, which is a surface. It's a two-dimensional shape in three-dimensional space. Okay, and more generally, it's an m-dimensional surface in m plus one-dimensional space. Okay, and that's still all true. That's a fine way to think about scalar fields. In practice, though, in vector calculus, we're usually not going to think about them like that. We're going to think about scalar fields slightly differently. We're going to think of them as just, okay, you've got this input space. So for example, if m is 2, our input space is two-dimensional. Okay, And what we're going to do is we're just going to assign numbers to each of those. The number that we assign is just the function value at that point. Okay, So for example, if f of 0, 0 is 50, then at the point 0, 0, the origin, we're just going to put a little dot that says 50. <coughs> Okay, and then if at the point 1, 0, the function value is 51, so f of 1, 0 is 51, then we just put a little dot there that says 51. And then we do this for lots of points. And that is sort of our standard way of visualizing scalar fields. Okay, now, of course, we can't do this for every point because, right, like there are infinitely many points everywhere in every interval. Okay, if we did that, you know, we wouldn't be able to see what the labels are on these points. So we just do it for some sort of discrete grid, usually integers, maybe every half integer, something like that. OK, and that gives us a rough idea, at least, of what the, the scalar field looks like. This it's the same as the graph method that we used up above. All that's happening is we're taking these vertical bars. We're taking these bars that are going from the floor up to the surface. And we're just saying, well, how high is that? How tall is that bar? Ah, That's the number that I'm going to place on that spot on the input grid. OK, so it's just a way of compressing the visualization down to one smaller dimension. Up here, when we use graphs, we need a three-dimensional graph if m was 2. Down here, we only need a two-dimensional plot if m is 2. OK, so it lets us sort of omit the, the output dimension just by labeling the numbers that correspond to the output dimension. And I should note that this sort of, this corresponds very naturally to contour plots, which you've probably already seen in an earlier course as well. For contour plots, what you did was it was just this sort of picture as well, except instead of just labeling the points at discrete on a discrete grid, you connected the dots between, you know, dots that had the same function value. OK, so for example, if there was a, a contour labeled 51, it would go through these three points here. And then you would just try to sort of complete the shape. And that would tell you, oh, what's the contour here look like? OK, it was just curves of constant output. In other words, you know, connecting all the dots on this plot that have the same label attached to them. That's what a contour was. All right, fine and dandy. There's a third way of thinking about uh, these scalar fields as well. And that is just instead of, you know, drawing all these points and labeling numbers associated with them, what you do is you pick a color scheme. OK, so again, we're, we're going to label points on the input grid. It's still just going to be a two dimensional picture if M is two. 
Except this time, instead of labeling a number on each point corresponding to the function values, what we're going to do is we're going to label, you know, a color on each point. So for example, down here at the bottom left, I've put blue, and at the top right, I put blue. At the top left, I put red, and at the bottom right, I put red. What that corresponds to with the color scheme I've chosen here is that the values at the bottom right are large, and the top left are large, whereas the bottom left, these were the blue ones, and the top right, those were the blue ones those numbers are much smaller. The function values are smaller there. So we could imagine maybe this scalar field, this function represents temperature or something like that. If you were trying to represent the temperature on a surface, this would be a very standard way of doing it, okay? If these are degrees Fahrenheit, then at the top right and the bottom left of the surface, it's very cold, so I'm representing it via blue. But then at the bottom right and the top left, oh, it's very hot, okay? So I'm, I'm using red at those points. Okay, and this is a time when you probably wouldn't use a surface because we don't usually think of temperature as height. It's more normal to just label the values or use colors like this. All right, and that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be back in a day or two for the next video, so see you then.